Well, hi, once again, ladies and gentlemen. And on behalf of Diamond Billiard Products, we'd like to welcome you to the Silver Jubilee of the world famous Derby City Classic. Thank you very, very much. We're in day number seven of our nine day extravaganza. We're in one pocket for most of the day and we got a lot of action for you, so we'll be underway momentarily. We're in the Akistats Arena at Caesars Southern Indiana, where we always are this time of year. And this event is proudly sponsored, of course, by Diamond Billiard Products, Simona's Cloth, and Aramuth, and also our two great associate sponsors from Outsville and Master Chalk, and recognizing once again the great work by Bad Boys Billiards Productions for tournament direction. Wow, 25 years is quite a milestone, especially in our industry. And the modern day reincarnation of Johnson City has now kind of taken on its own identity. And as I said, it is a world renowned tournament at this time, but we never could have got here without all the great support, help and enthusiasm along the way from each and every one of you watching out there and our great extended DCC family that comes here and sits and watches ringside. So thank you very much. We want to make sure you enjoy this very special and historic week, ladies and gentlemen. You certainly deserve it. Thanks very much. Okay, a very quick recap on one pocket. Here's where we are. 402 players began. There are 30 players left. We're going into round number eight. Of the 30 players left, 11 of them have rebuys. So uh, we still got a little bit of a ways to go. Let's get underway. From New Orleans, he's a two-time US Open One Pocket Champion, and he is the reigning and defending Derby City One Pocket Champion. Sponsored by Game Tight Clothing, arguably one of the best in the world at this game. Please welcome T-Rex, Tony Chohan. And his opponent, who has been no stranger to center court here over the last few years, he's from Detroit. He's got two runner-up finishes in Derby City Bank Pool. He came all so close, he's trying to get there again this year. He's also got a top four finish in a Derby One Pocket. Sponsored by Predator, please welcome Evan Landa. Okay guys, please lag for the break if you would. 30, uh, 60 second shot clock. And we're going to send it up to the com box right now. So the voice of Accustats, Billy Incardona, and special guest commentator, the freezer, Scott Frost. Go ahead, Bill. Welcome back, everybody. This is Scott Frost, and we are here at the 25th anniversary 2024 Derby City Classic One Pocket Division live on Accustats Video Productions. And I have the main man in the booth with me, Mr. Billy, a.k.a. William in Cardona. Hello, Billy. Uh, hello, Scott. That was really generous of you. I mean, uh, well, I do appreciate that. Well, you are the main man. You are the voice of AccuStats for many, many years, and it's an honor to be in the booth with you. This match will be special, in my opinion. Evan Lunda with no losses, and we see here that he has won the lag which is all too important in this race to three, but the man he is playing is so creative, it only takes one shot to reverse the break. What do you think will happen here? Well, first of all, i like to say that these two guys, they kind of like are very familiar with, with one another, both coming from Detroit. Even though uh, Shohan lives in New Orleans right now, he lived in Detroit prior to going to New Orleans, and they played a lot of pool, and it was very competitive back then. So it's on both of their minds how competitive they are with one another, and I expect to see a sharply contested match. It could go either way. I fully agree. Evan placing the cue ball out from the rail a little bit further, which is the right move on new cloth. I've learned that my hard way yesterday. I do think that Evan might be playing a little more consistent, which is, which is insane to say, but he is playing really, really well the last year. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. He's broke the balls nicely. We noticed the four hovering over his pocket. Tony's got to defend there. It's very hard to predict what he's going to do, Billy, because of his creativity. 
uh, thing is he tried to move some balls positioning the cue ball on the wrong side of the stack. Sometimes you need to do that to defend defend against a pretty unique uh, looking break which has had been broken uniquely, but it wasn't a powerful break, but it, but it was one that was difficult to get out of. Well, it was obviously an effective break yes. due to the fact that Choan had to place the cue ball on what we would call the wrong side of the stack, but it was containing, and he's going to get at least another inning out of it. He would like to put him back where the cue ball is now. Let's see if he, well, he's putting him on the rail. Let's take a look at why he chose to put him on the rail as opposed to putting him in the stack. Because I think that he had that option to both put him on the rail like he did or put him back in the stack. Putting him back in the stack, maybe he could have kicked across table toward the 11 possibly to get out of the break. Very good the point. Stack. But by being on the rail, Scott, you know it's very difficult now to kick at the 11 ball considering he's the cue ball's on this rail. Absolutely, and to Billy's point, he's completely cut off from the 11. He can't get to the top side of the 5. He could kick long rail to the top rail. That's the only kick-out option. He possibly could kick three rails short to the back side of the 11. That might be better. That is better than the long rail kick. Well, considering that he only has a few options available and none of them are appealing, I think putting him on the rail like Evan did was the correct shot. Agreed. And to your point, if he puts him in the stack, then Tony can softly kick one rail behind the 11 to the short rail. So that's easy compared to where he is now. A lot of hesitation out there. You know, he doesn't really know what to do. It's a 60-second shot clock automatic with one extension. Looks like he might be playing the 9 here. He's looking at the 9 possibly off the 7. Boy, that's uh, I close. See I see it, but it's so hard to pull the trigger on that shot. Not only is it a low percentage shot, but you're going to move most balls on the other side of the table. A lot of bad things can happen, even if you pocket the ball. Absolutely, but there's point in time in the game where you have to gamble, where, where you can tell yourself, I'm either going to win the game or lose the game. I'm in such a bad position. I'm already negative. I'm in a bad, bad position here. If he thinks that he's a 50% chance to make this ball, you can't fault him for shooting it. The cue ball is going to go through the balls. I'm not surprised if he gets a shot if he makes it. He could take an intentional. Okay, now he's on two fouls. No, that oh, wasn't that's correct. So now I was talking about the intentional by shooting the cue ball uh, up table near the... Uh, upper left-hand corner pocket and doubling up uh, Evan with the 11 ball and using the one to double him up. Correct. You jarred me there when you said he could take an intentional. He actually got a rail, so he does not owe one. And that's not a bad choice, right, by the way, because, you know, shooting that low percentage uh, carom out with the nine ball, you know, he didn't want to open up the balls and hopes that he made the nine because it was a, you know, it really was an aggressive, aggressive move that uh, maybe it wasn't time to do. He wasn't time to shoot that. I agree. Now, now that he loosened up the balls a little bit, but next time he gets back to the table, he may have better options. Ken Schumann having a conversation with Lunda. As Billy said a moment ago, you get one automatic extension. There is a 60-second shot clock. Lunda looking to put him back in the pile. I would yeah. believe. Yeah, I would, I would go to the pile because of the position of the eight ball. But he, he protected the eight ball. Well, now he can't show him cannot come off the eight ball to maneuver. Yeah, so he's, he protected the eight ball, which is well thought out. But and I believe this was a mistake, Billy, because Tony can bank the 13 and put him on top of the nine. I think that was a mistake. I think you've got to come back into the nine and 14 there. You see what I'm saying, Billy? Yeah. Well, he probably didn't want to uh, keep the cue ball that low. He probably wanted to go up a little bit further. Well, and take away that bank, that you know, the natural bank, I should say. Right, and he could have caught that ball he went off of thicker, though, and made sure he got back into the pile. That he, you know, that he could have done that. So, this could prove devastating. I don't believe he snookered on the nine. Boy, he's got to twist it. So he's got nudged up on the ten. Oh, I believe he's nudged him. I don't know how good that's going to do him anyway. If he didn't snooker him, this could be damaging, Billy. Oh, if he didn't snooker him, get correct. You know, he'll play the, the, the uh, two cushions into the 14 angle. I believe that's available. The nine ball 
hitting both the uh, side cushion, bottom cushion, and then into the 14. No, he well, he did snooker him. He look. did. Uh, he had an option there to uh, do what he did, which was very, very well thought out and executed, or possibly even kick at the nine with a little speed. That's a little bit more aggressive, but uh, very effective if, if it would have been hit well. Agreed, Bill. Now, Tony seems to be faced with basically what he was looking at after the break. He's hemmed up. He's completely cut off from everything that favors Lunda. See, now he's going to take the intentional. He should take the intentional now and double him up with the one. I don't think he's going to do that. I, he's trying to kick. I don't know how if he's, there's a, a, a decent avenue there. Well, why don't we wait and see, Bill? And it's lengthened out. He's going to go into the five. And that's a tough shot on new cloth, correct? Well, it's a very, very low percentage kick, you know, particularly considering the position of the balls. I think if there was any chance of him doubling him up or taking an intentional at the other end of the table, I think that was the better shot. Well, he's going to have to come off the five here if he does shoot the 11 now. Yeah, that could be his savior there, Tony, that is. Uh, he's going to go into the five and depending on how thickly he goes into the five will determine where the cue ball will go and he can manufacture an angle here by how thin he wants to hit the 11 he can play to really overcut this 11 and catch the f lower half of the five and get back to the eight and 14 just like so but he's overhit it well, he got unlucky, and then he got lucky. He got unlucky by not going into the stack. Had he gone into the stack after going into the five, he would have had a shot on the eight. He wasn't able to do that, but he ended up with a nice shot on the six here. So, therefore, he got unlucky, and then he got lucky. Or he could have just hit it a bit softer and guaranteed a shot on the eight. You know, in that particular uh, type of a shot, you really don't know what kind of action you're going to get off that, that kiss off the five. You know, you'd hit a little more thickly, then you end up coming up short on the eight. This is a big shot here. When you're close to the ball like this, it can be tricky. He's executed it perfectly. Lunda has got a, got a nice finesse game. He's got a beautiful stroke. It looks like he doesn't you know, have to do anything very special to get the cue ball to go where he wants to go. Yeah, he's a very smooth player. His transition with the stroke is very silky. It's smooth. You don't notice anything erratic ever. And he's played like that his entire life. And it's a beautiful, he's a beautiful player to watch play. I really like the way he plays. And like you said, and uh, he's got such a beautiful stroke and it's wonderful to be able to play the way he plays so effortlessly. So he's got a choice to make here. Do you try and snatch the cue ball? Two rails around the nine, the five and one play up in the pocket so I don't know if he just takes the bank which is probably the smart play and that's what he's going to do Bill I agree too because uh, this way he eliminates the nine and it, it actually gets it has more potential nothing plays in Chohan's pocket as we can see Lunda playing for three nicely executed nice soft stroke Position the cue ball just about just about in an ideal position on the table nice little drawback here nice and over. soft stroke look how beautiful he plays the game playing for one there you have it yeah, like I said Scott I mean it was a tough decision on Tony's part to, to kick at those balls as opposed to taking an intentional because it really wasn't a really a good avenue down there to get out of the out of that particular inning no and I agree I mean if you're gonna take a foul I don't know if up table was the move there taking a foul though because the five did go and the 11 actually made it a bigger pocket so he could have played a combination Evan being of some sort so I don't know if the foul was the right move up table, but it was definitely probably the move. I just don't know where. It's time for Chohan to break the balls. And this is a must-win game for him, Billy. When a short race to three and you lose the first game, now, you're, now it's your break. You don't get as many breaks. Well, he didn't win the lag either, which is very costly. Obviously, if it goes hill-hill, Lunda will break. He's gotten a little fortunate here. You've got to say he's got... The point on both pockets there. 
by the cue ball, and he's got real good protection. The 1 covers the 13 and 11 up, and the 4 is also a blocker. There's big problems here. Can he come off the 14? No, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if he can, but if he can, he's going to leave the 1. You know, I mean, he's really, really got his hands tied here, right here. He's, that was a powerful break. Much more powerful break than when Lunda broke him in the first game. But Lunda's break was effective, but not a powerful break. This well, is what you call a powerful break. Correct. I like where the cue ball ended up on Lunda's break. This was a, a little bit fortunate, in my opinion, I agree. where the cue ball ended up. I think Lunda's got to go off the 15 and just stick him on the pile. Yeah, this really. is time for him to try to grind out of the break. He's no, nothing, nothing uh, there for him uh, other than to do what he did. Uh, I really like what he did. He didn't want that ball to fall. That's going to cause some issues. He'd like to have had that on his side of the table. Tony can play off of it. And that's the main thing. He can play off of it and put him right back. Yeah, whereas he didn't have much to play off of if this ball doesn't fall to in the side. So a couple good little things happening for Chohan early in game number two. Well, like he said, he's going to need it because he trails one to nothing. And if he doesn't hold service here, he's got a big, big problem. Yeah, I know that uh, you've made a wager or two in the past, and I'm sure you would wager that Chohan gets the first shot in this game. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't think that's a wager. I think that's stealing. <laughs> He has his hands full, there's no doubt. He might just be forced to take a foul up. Absolutely, this. absolutely. You want to lengthen the game. Whenever you're confronted with like a, almost a no-win situation, you want to try to lengthen the game like he's doing now because it's much more difficult for Shohan to get nine or ten balls as opposed to eight when he gets his shot. Correct. The only issue with this is that Shohan's going to take the foul back, and now Lunda has to shoot out. He cannot risk being on two fouls and then shoot out, right? And what I mean by that, folks at home, is he's going to have to shoot out of the pile now. No matter what he does, he can take a foul. He's only on one, but he doesn't want to take a foul in the pile and then risk shooting out and scratching. So you really can only bide your time with one foul there versus two. Well, I don't know if I totally agree with that. I think that he could push something and maybe try to change the position. He got, you know, like a little push and maybe loosen up a ball or two to um, give him more options when he's on that second foul. Well, most players won't take, won't take the second foul at this level under these circumstances into the pile. If he does, then he's going to give himself something real easy to get out of. But it's pretty risky being elevated over all of those balls, Billy, taking a foul, and then having to shoot out of there again when you're on two. And this is why he did what he did there. It didn't turn out great, but he was in such a bad spot. Oh, there's no question about it. He was in a bad spot. And uh, I just thought that perhaps that he would loosen up a ball or two by pushing. Well, he did. And, you know, but right, right now he's like uh, giving Tony. Well, uh, it was inevitable, Billy. I mean, he was in bad, bad trouble. Big shot coming up for Shohan right here. This is the key to this rack for him right here, the first shot. Well, he, it wiped its feet. He got it down. This cue know. ball might end know. up in no man's land, Billy. That was the key right there for him. He had to come up with another shot. He overhit that, in my opinion. You want to guarantee yourself position. If he just rolls that nicely rail first, you know you're going to get a shot on the 13. A little bit surprised there. Mm-hmm. Well, hindsight is twenty twenty. so... Correct, but people at home like to hear what you would have done, Billy. Absolutely. Okay, absolutely. that's what I'm doing. Ab well, absolutely. I totally agree with what you were saying. But Can he cut the two? That, you know, now that he's done that, it's, uh, it's easy for us to say, what if it's or what if that, but you know, but you, correct, you are 100% correct. Yeah, I think this was his only option. He really wanted to nudge him up there, right, Bill? Yeah, absolutely. He wanted to put that cue ball on or on, on the four, 14 ball there, but uh, he's fallen short of the mark here. He has, and this is a big break for Lunda. A big break. Yeah. And Chohan knows it. Well, don't forget, though, he can always try to get him back there again. Uh, after, sh after Lunda shoots, Tony's going to try to probably figure out a way to get him back where Lunda's shooting from. 
that's going to be difficult because I think Lunda's going to try and get Tony under the 13 and 2. So everything could be reversed at this time if he hits it well. Yes, he did. And what else he did, he tried to position another ball with two on his side of the table, which he's done that quite well. Yes. So that was an extension of the thought about getting him back underneath the 13, uh, creating a much Correct. better position for himself. Absolutely right. Mobilize the three to his side, open the 15 up, like you said, the 14 and one both play. And now the game is reversed, all due to poor position play by Cho Han. He could kick at the three here. I Ooh, it's like, pretty risky. I, yeah, but you kick at the professional side. But here's why it's risky, Bill. The 14 plays off the one. These pockets are forgiving. They're not big, but they're very forgiving with the new cloth. The 14 plays off the one. You go to the professional side of the three. It could cost you the game. I think that's real risky. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see that the Karen was available if, in fact, it's on. I don't know from my vantage point if it's on, but it looks like it's pretty close to being on. So if he kicks at the three, the 14 Karen off the one could be a, a very viable option. Let's see what he does. And now I think Tony needs to do what Lunda had to do. He really needs to. Oh, wow. Are you kidding me? He played this shot. Are you kidding me? That Can we get a replay a of this shot? shot. That's what, that came off the top shelf there, out there, that. I would love to get a replay of that shot. I don't know if it'll happen. These guys are working hard, but he are, we are going to get another look at that. Look at this shot. That was such a creative shot. And not many people not in the world could have thought, uh, you know, could have figured that one out. That was well thought out and executed perfectly. Yeah, that, that was high, high level. Actually, that was the highest level. Notice how nicely he put the cue ball against the 11. Nice, soft stroke. And this is what he does so well. His cue ball control is beautiful yes. due to his stroke, yeah, right? His right. stroke never changes, Billy. It's always, even when he's pocketing balls, it's always the same. And he's got such the accuracy hitting that cue ball, which would then transfer over to, to controlling it. So nicely. Chohan has another problem. I'm, I'm really kind of curious and anxious to see what he does because this, this guy is so creative. He can probably kick between this 15 and 8, but boy, I don't know. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, now that is absolutely amazing. <laughs> I mean, people just don't do that kind of stuff, Scott. Well, what he did there, though, let's be real on that shot, it was a little easier than the shot prior. What he did oh, there, though, is he was going to be okay if he didn't catch the 15. He would have been happy, right? But he did catch the 15, so to your point, pretty spectacular. Yeah. Lunda going to take a foul, and that foul was not easy by any means. But Chohan might even have a two-railer on this seven and tuck between the four and one. He shoots shots like that. He doesn't play the seven to make it, but he's got an angle to play his cue ball and possibly get the seven close. You know, if he opts to shoot that option that you just described, okay, it's not going to be an option that's going to be easy to execute. It's a very difficult op option to execute, but if anyone can execute it, Tony Shohan is one of the players that can, de that can do it. Well, he's looking at the shot. And the only reason that I'm bringing this shot up is because it provides an angle that you see right now that he's looking with with his cue. It provides an angle for an escape with the cue ball. Exactly. And you shoot this shot when there's no other options available, providing that you can notice it's available. Well, he misstroked this ball. He underhit it. He decelerated. Lunda can make the one. I don't know that he sees it. He does now. He can make the one. I don't know if he wants to shoot it because he's going hard into the eight. But he can make that one. He cuts balls so well. I think he's got to shoot it with a little high left English into the, because he's not going to. Yeah, I, th you, I think yeah, he's got a little bit of high left. I think he's going to end up with the shot on the four. High left end up, I think, he, yeah, I think, I don't know that he can do that, Bill. Let's take a look. I think he could draw it off the eight, though, and get on the four. He's going to go into oh, you, it real you think, heavy. Uh, yeah, I, oh, I, 
It's hard for me to, I think that, you know, the way I look at it is after pocketing the one, he's going to hit the underside of the eight, more toward the, his side of the table. I understand. Well, if he's not shooting it, then he's probably the one that's right. It must be laying tougher than it looks. Um, yeah, all right. I think that got away from him a little bit. It's okay. I don't know if Chohan can see. Well, he can see the eight, so Tony's going to have an opportunity to get out of this trouble that he's in. Can he see the eight? Yes. You think he can? Yes, I know he can. Well, he liked to have tucked that cue ball behind the one and two a little bit more, but it's not terrible due to where the eight ended up. The 13's got it covered. But I think Lunda can play something similar. The 13 off the bottom of the five and tucked down by the four. He could play the 13 and the eight as well if he'd like. Mm-hmm. Oh, nicely done. Yeah, I kind of like what he did because he eliminated the uh, the 13 from Tony's side of the table. Absolutely. So he doesn't have to be concerned about that later on in this rack. And he could have ended up with maybe even pocketing a ball with that shot as well because Absolutely. of the, the, uh, the potential that shot carried. Well, we're going up table. And with these two players, you typically don't expect that they're so creative it's almost impossible to keep the other guy from staying aggressive to his pocket but this has been a spectacular game hasn't it absolutely Come on, spectacular uh, game yeah I, we certainly got our money's worth just in the early part of this uh, absolutely rack. especially with you know with tony coming up with those two very creative very difficult difficult shots to execute and not only that the the quality and cue ball control from Lunda to Absolutely. put him in those positions. Yeah, well, he's a master at that, you know. Um, I mean, people that are watching this match are really being treated to a, an outstanding match up until this point. There's no doubt. And he's going to take another foul, and for you folks at home, it gives you an idea of his brain, and I think it's the right play. He'd like to tuck him in there on the five, but when the brain works like that, all he is thinking about is earning a better shot next time. And the reason he chose to do that is because he definitely has the better ball position. If he if he would have shot any other shot, it would have been an up table game. He's going to give it one last ditch effort to keep the balls where they are in the event that he does come up with a shot, he can steal this game. Absolutely, Billy. And he can go up table here now, possibly behind the four if he wants. He can stick back to the stack, but sometimes it's worth a ball to get another ball or two to your side of the table. And his headiness, his intelligence to shoot the shot that he did is most likely going to earn him uh, the first shot and a possible winning shot. Yeah, I believe he overdrew that, though. Chohan's going to have a nice little soft kick to the yeah, bottom of the I, five. I totally agree. You want to kick and get that five away from that pocket, and like Jeff Scott just said, I think Tony should do that. Is he looking to do something aggressive with the six here? Maybe he can catch more of this ball than we see. Well, I couldn't. I didn't think that would bank. I'm surprised uh, at this decision. It I mean, looked I, like he was cut off from that. Well, whatever he was thinking about, it was a mistake because well, now, now Lunda has an excellent chance to win this game at this in this inning here. Yeah, I'm. I'm a little surprised at that. Note where the six ended up. It didn't get close. He was trying to turn the six over the five, make it, and get the bank on the six. First off, on new clock, that ball close. isn't going to turn enough, right? Yeah, it wasn't even he close. He knows better than that. I'm a little surprised. Well, this ball is going to come up. Now that was a game winner there. And with this forgiving pocket. You and never want to play it to the short side. Well, the so reason he wanted he, the reason he played it to the short side, he wanted to hold the cue ball up. You know, if he if he cut the ball more, you got more speed with the cue ball. In you don't come up with the shot on the five. Of course, but he could have turned it over more. The fourteen plays as well, Billy. That was a huge error. Big error. He's correct. You want to get the ball down prior to position. And I think the most important part of the shot was pocketing the ball. Absolutely. And there you go. Now, Joe, and thinking, thinking a little bit more like maybe I need to get these up table. Yes. 
I think that's something he could have done earlier. He is fortunate Lunda's missed the bank. Very fortunate. And uh, as well as Lunda Banks. He yes. You, 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 no one expected him. No. And neither did he, missing that bank. But he does have a one nothing lead in this match. He does have the favorable ball position. So Tony still has really well, his hands full right here. Lunda is negative two. So that does matter. Because the balls are going up table, those two balls can be all too big, especially with a guy like Chohan. I like coming off the four here, putting him in back of the nine, let him go from there. You've got to protect that five. He, he does, you do trail. Coming off the four. Many, yeah, off the four. Wow, that's real risky. And if you miss hit it at all, you could leave a cut on the nine that's too free. Because the 10 plays possibly, Billy, and the 12, that's risky. I don't think he's going to do that. I wouldn't have a problem moving the 5. Well, look at this ball. going to spot up, and Chohan's going to be straight in. I wouldn't have had a problem. You work this hard up to this point, just tickle the 5 up table a fraction, put him on the bottom rail. You don't have to push the issue. We know they're going up table. He played a carom bank. The ball that he caromed off of went straight into the side, Billy. He's going to play the shape for the bank. I thought he was going to play shape for the five-ball bank. And this is okay. He needs to carry some type of an angle, though, here, right, Billy, to get up to the eight or hold for the 12. Mm, you got to play for the bank next and the, then try to go up table, maybe go into the 14. That'll open the six ball up and also give you a chance to pocket the eight and then go down table for the 12 so the, uh, he has to he has to play the angle underneath the five cutting the five to his left a little bit and then going up toward the 14 well he didn't do that he he's going for the 12 next he's, he's got a perfect line to stop the cue ball for position on the 12. Yeah, he's going to be a little steep on this 12 i think yeah, he's going to be pretty steep here. I didn't think that was quite perfect. He overcut the, the bank yeah, as well a little bit. That's why right? he's steep as, I, as he is. Because if he went forward, he wouldn't have went that way and, and they put a better shot. But he's close enough to the to the yeah. 12 ball. He's got a good look at it. I expect to see him pocket it. And he's jumped up. He didn't pocket it. Uh, he got a little fortunate that he didn't get a bad kiss. Now, let's remind everyone, Lunda owes two, Chohan has four. It's a big turn of events in a beautiful early game, Billy. I guess we could lead back to the five that Lunda's missed, the bank. I'm just going to try to squeeze him under the two here. Well, he's got such a good touch for that shot. I like that shot. I think it's nice. He's probably going to ticky back in the same spot, talking about Chohan. Do the same thing. I don't think he got a cushion. Yes, he did, and it's frozen. Look at, it. Look at the monitor. You're correct. And now he can just get rid of the 12 if he chooses. I think you're right there. I don't think he can do anything else. Yeah, there's no reason why he wouldn't. Uh, if he did, I would learn something, which I don't think is available. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, and Tony, this is a part of Tony's game, I think, that lacks a little bit when they're up table and he's got a ball lead. I obviously don't think he's going to shoot right now, but he's so creative that he likes to keep the pressure on your opponent no matter what. His ball count plays a little different than mine or many other players. There's nothing wrong with it. It's his style, but it can also be his downfall. Yeah, it could be his downfall, but, but you know... Uh it got him to where he is. He's going to play that style. Exactly you know? what I just if he said. opts to change it, he may not like it. You know, you got to. 
you got to continue to play with the efficiency and the proficiency that you that got you to where you are now. Well, what I'm saying here, Billy, is that when you've got a four to negative two ball lead, there's no reason to take chances. Yeah, we do understand that. And then you said that uh, he does that because of his style. Well, he has been known to do that yeah, for right. 20 years. Yeah. So uh, I don't think he's going to do that in these positions, that's all. And he is real good at controlling the outcomes of these situations. There's just times where he feels like he's behind, even though he's ahead. Well, he's tied to 3-8 up a little bit there. I don't know that it's going to hurt him. The 7 bank bill, I don't think it banks past the no. 15 or the 12, whichever ball that is in the center. Lunda did take a look at the 3-8 just in case he wants to send something towards his pocket. I think it's too risky right now. No, he's going down table here. Uh, what really good speed that is. Isn't it? Really, really nicely executed. It'll settle shots of that type, of that sort, I should say, so go, go, goes unnoticed so often. And he pocketed a ball in the top pocket there. And for all you one-pocket players, when you're trying to get the cue ball down on the bottom rail, we all know it seems like a miracle, but you typically make one in another pocket so it's easy for them to get off the spot ball. I don't know how or why, but it happens all the time. It is so irritating. <laughs> <laughs> it Isn't is. It? <laughs> it, when you're not trying to make it, it goes. But when you yeah. don't try to, when you do try to make it, it doesn't. So what does he do here, Bill? Roll onto the 13. Yeah, that's about all you can do. I got to give Lunda credit. He is grinding. Six balls behind at the moment. Chohan has four. Lunda owes two. Lunda does lead one game to zero in this race to three. It makes a difference not getting that cue ball on the rail. I don't know what Evan has here, but it does make a difference. Can he two rail at the three, sending the seven towards his pocket? Not time for that. And maybe he knows that his opponent likes to take some <laughs> extra chances <laughs> here and there. Yeah, maybe he does. He's played him uh, uh, enough times to make that determination that this guy here, if I get weight on him, I know that he'll do something extra aggressive and maybe give me an opportunity to get back into this game. That's right. And that's awfully good to know how your opponent thinks and how he plays whenever you're facing this type of a deficit. A lot of people, when they face this kind of a deficit, they try to push the, push the pen. You know what I mean? They try to do something. Absolutely. But sometimes it's better off if you wait, if you're playing at a player that will give you the opportunity if you wait for it. And this is where when people say you're not playing the player, you're playing the table, I have to disagree in this game at this level. Oh, look at this. He got a great rub off the 15 and didn't catch the 8. Could have scratched so easily there, I know, Billy. so easily, yeah. A lot of things could have went wrong with that particular shot. A lot of things. You know, even if he wouldn't have scratched, you know, like he didn't and come off, uh, not gotten behind the 8, he could have left the shot on the 14 or the 4. Correct. And yeah, Tony can't see the edge of the 15. He's going to bring the cue ball down one, two rails to the bottom rail. Nicely done. Nice speed. That shot required hitting it with the perfect speed, which we just saw him do, and that's what he needed to do. Yeah, and I think we're going to see Lunda go ahead and shoot at something again here, kind of, because he needs protection on that ball or he needs something going. I don't think the 9 is the play, though, Billy. I think the 14 passes the 2, if oh, at I worst, thought, the 4 plays. Yeah, I thought that it did, too. Uh, hmm. He might just have to roll up on the two or do something simple here. Maybe he can go rail first underneath the two. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Oh, look at this. He played that carom and to cross the, the two over. And look, look at where the cue ball. ball is on top of the 13. He got a little unfortunate to four. Very. He ended up 
on top of the 12, not lining it up. So Tony can probably do something with it, but he's so on top of that 13, but he's, limiting himself, you know, tremendously got, what he can do. He, he should kick here. Easy, soft kick behind the balls. Now, if they weren't frozen together, like you said, Billy, this would be much more difficult. Well, he's mishit it, and I guess the high karate kept the cue ball there, so I don't know that he got away with it, but he didn't exactly <laughs> hit it how he wanted the speed that he kicked with was risky. It was risky. He so could have scratched reversed. Yeah, especially on new cloth. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I, I don't know what he's gonna, London's going to do here. He went, you know, he's, he does trail in, the, in this particular game. Four to, is it four to nothing or four to minus one? Four to negative two. Four to Bill. minus two, excuse, yeah. He may try to get, uh, be, get a little aggressively here with well, the bank on the seven. I that, don't know. That four is a problem for Lunda. Yeah, and he's, he's gotten aggressive. He, he, and the reason he's staying like that, did he get away with it and nudge him up on to the 15? I don't know. I don't know. I think he, I don't know. The he's reason he stayed close. aggressive there for the folks at home is because he had a ball by his pocket. But there's times when the shot just isn't there. And you don't want to risk the game by trying to manufacture something that isn't there. I know we've all done it. I know I sound like I play perfect up here. But really, you've worked real hard in this game to stay alive. I don't think as much of it, the shot wasn't there. The shot was there, but the execution of the shot was so difficult, maybe it was a deterrent, and he shouldn't have shot it. And that's probably why he shot it and, what's, and why it happened the way it did, because of the degree of difficulty in well, the shot. there was a lot of balls that he could sell out on as well. Yeah, I agree. So knowing that in the back of your mind, and this is what you're saying, it, it could uh, it could affect how you're going to shoot the shot. Oh, most certainly. Most certainly. And you have to factor that in. And if you don't factor that in, you better be prepared to shoot right. the shot and not think about anything else other than the shot. Absolutely. Chohan playing for one. He's going to bunt this out. Could have come all the way down table on that four ball, and he stayed high. I don't believe it was intentional. London well, going to get aggressive. He's not going <laughs> to wait around. No, he, he said, enough of this nonsense. I'm just going get, to get rid of this game and go on to the next one. Good game by Chohan. He was in a bad, bad trap multiple times. Kicked his way out, kicked his way out. Looks to me like he wants to take a break. Ken Schumann said, I don't think you can do that unless Evan gives you permission because it's Evan's break. But Evan had no problem with it. And we will be right back. Oh, he's changing side here. Didn't, he didn't break for the side when he opened up, did he? I believe he did, Bill. He did? Yes, he did. Yeah, he did. Matter of fact, you're right. And pretty much the same result, but a little bit more open up. There is an escape, possibly. If he can go forward on the 12, he'd have to manufacture something to keep the 12 from crashing into the 11. So it's not a bad break. No, but there is another option. He probably possibly could kick and hitting the long rail up in front of the 13. There's a small possibility he could scratch off the 13, but I don't think it's that likely. I think that's an op op option that he may have. He could also. There's several options. He could also take a foul up in, the, up in this top right corner, or right. excuse me, top left corner, I guess. Mm-hmm. Now, he's got to control the 12 here. It may go into the 11. If it does that, then he's going to have a problem here. Well, so. I, he might be crashing into it and drawing two rails up into the top left. Can't tell. That's Unit. pretty aggressive, though. Well, he is aggressive. Yeah, that's pretty aggressive there. He's passing. 
Okay, so once again. I don't like that. Well, this I, is similar to what he did in game number one, Bill. Yeah, but I, I don't like it then. I, there, were, there were other options he had, and uh, I, I'm not really fond of that one. No, I'm not fond of that one. Well, I agree. I think that he had multiple options, like you stated. He could have at worst taken a foul in the top left corner because the 1 and 13 were doubled up and there was nothing threatening the pocket. Yeah, that certainly would have been a better option, in my opinion, than what he did. And we're going to find out exactly, you know, what's going to transpire because of the option he chose. Wow. It's not looking very good. No, and it's due to, like you said, the option he chose. He's walked back to his chair, and he's not really looking happy either. If you can put a camera on Shohan, you're going to see he's not real happy with, uh, I believe that with the results. Ken Schumann is stating that Tony moved a ball. Two or more is a foul. It's not all ball fouls. Which is quite uncommon when you're talking about you know professional tournaments nowadays. But in this tournament, they're not playing foul on all balls. Well, we don't play fouls on all balls, playing one pocket at any of the big level tournaments, right. Bill. Oh. It's two or more as a foul. Due to the positioning of the balls and stretching and reaching, I think it's the proper rule. All ball fouls playing one pocket could be very, very difficult. I do think it's okay playing rotation. I have no, no problem with it due okay. to the space and the layouts. Now, you got to go across table here, play position for the three or the 12 right now. I agree. Absolutely. And he's nice. come to the three. Yeah, that'll give him much more potential in terms of running balls because you have a good angle to do it now. Do it now. Yeah, and you want to draw back and carry an angle on the 12 now to go into the pile. Well, he's gotten pretty flat. I think he would have liked to have had a better angle there because of the position of the 13. Yeah, I'm sure that he thought of that and tried to, but a little miss hit there. Well, it could have been a miss, big miss hit because this is what's followed. One poor positional shot, as Jeremy Jones says, can lead to another, which can either cause a miss or your inning at the table. I kind of like going into the 15. I think he can. Well, I don't think so, Bill. The 15 is going to crash off the f 2 and 4. The 14 is going to crash off the 2 and 7 and come mm. Tony's way. That's I'm why he didn't I'm do that. I'm talking about with the softer speed. Put him on there and open up balls on the bottom rail and the side rail. I don't think he would. I don't think he would have got much movement from the 14. Okay. Well, what he did looked pretty good to me. Not positive on the outcome of the other shot. Hindsight is 2020. Does the 15 play to Tony's pocket? He took a look at it. He's not going to entertain. Back in the nine out of there. Okay, move the ball on his side, R2. He had a full purpose of moving that five, but he didn't do anything with the cue ball. Just stopped the cue ball right there. Could have stunned it forward a little bit more. I don't know if this was intentional. Yeah, Lunda does have a four to nothing lead in this game. Match is tied up at one apiece, so he can't afford to play a shot that maybe somewhat suggests an up, an up table game, but still keep his position. Uh, I totally agree with that. Uh, I think he's a little afraid of going up table. And what I mean by that is maybe, let's say he wanted to bank the five back towards the, f the 13 and play the cue ball up in the center of the table. No. He's worried about the 15, and that was my point. Yeah. He wants to get that out of the way. It was a carom yeah. of the 14. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't implying that he should come off of any, any ball and go up table. I'm saying that I he wasn't saying you were, Bill. He should choose a shot that gave him that option to either to play an up table game or keep his position that he has now, like protecting the 13, which he's done. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Because now the up table game is still available if he chooses sure. to do so the next time he comes to the table. You know, but he still has that threat of that uh, 13 in front of his pocket. No, very well stated, Bill. Going to come off the one here, bringing the one to his side. And one ended up in a 
pretty tough spot for Shelley, and he didn't like it ending up there, but it did. Yeah, that is not a fun spot for it to stop. Yeah, he can still come up to six and just go to the rail and protect the 13, but he can't protect the kick on the 13. No, he can see the one. I don't think he can see the yeah, one. Yeah, he can see all of the one there. I know he really didn't want to shoot the one in, but I think that was his only protection ball that he could protect a 13 with. Well, what is the one going to spot up like? It's aimed high. Well, it was. He's working it low. Now, Tony may have to come off the five to drop to the bottom cushion here. You know, he's got a problem getting that ball, cue ball to the bottom cushion to defend against the third team. He may have to come off the five to do it. I agree, and he doesn't want to move it to his side, but he no. may be forced to. And I mean, he doesn't want to move. Chohan does not want to move the five to Lunda's side, but he might be forced to with what Billy is saying. Billy's saying come off the five and put him on the bottom rail. Can he get to the... Well, he can... S no, he cannot see the six. The one has him covered. Tony asked for a respot. That tells me that he sees something or is possibly trying to sniff something out there on the there on the spot ball. Even if he comes off the five to get to the bottom rail, he's certainly not out of the trap. I think I think he's going to leave options to it for uh, for Landa to uh, develop his position even further. So he's got a he's got a problem here. Not only does he trail four to nothing, but the ball position clearly favors Landa. Yeah, there's no doubt. I don't know what his intent on getting this ball spotted correctly is. If he thinks he can do something, I don't see anything there. I don't know. But he is intent on it. He's looking at something. He's got that creativity. I mentioned it being possibly close to throwing in prior. I still think it's way high, meaning the 11 is going to go up from the corner, not low. I don't think he can shoot it. And he's still not happy with where the spot ball's going, so there might be something he knows that we don't. I don't think he wants it higher. I think he wants it lower. If it goes lower, he might be able to play it. Oh, I agree. Sometimes when you spot a ball and there's a ball interfering with the possible position of the ball you need to spot, and you try to force it in there, and it's not lined up, and it doesn't seem like it is lined up to the no, spot. No, it doesn't. It so seems I like think it's he's a little right. bit. I think he is right. I th it seems a little bit, a little bit. It needs to come down a fraction. I, I don't agree. know, but I it agree. looks to me like it needs to come out just a fraction. Yeah, with the overhead, we have the advantage of seeing the overhead here in the booth, and you people at home too. But uh, Tony doesn't, and either does. Kenny. Yeah, and this is no good. I don't like what he tried to do there, Bill. He tried to cross the face of the 13 with that ball, sending the object ball up table, crossing the 13 over to his side. But, you know, I think he was forced to play your shot and come off the five there. He didn't get what he wanted with the spot ball. Mm -hmm. If I was he, if I were he, and I come off the five, I move the five out of there and right. play it because I don't want that to be a, a returning option for uh, for Linda to bank toward his pocket. I think, I think he's going to get a shot on the six. It's close. Yeah, I don't think he can make this set. Maybe he can. I don't, that doesn't appear that he can from here. I'm looking at no, the pipe. I don't think it's he can. close. I don't think he can make it. Well, whether he can or can't, what's his second option if he can't? Uh, can he three rail the five? Can he play the seven? I don't know that you want to risk opening all these up. He's got to feel good about it if he's going to shoot it. But, boy, it seems a little haphazard to me. <laughs> Looks much better now. Well, he liked to have made it. It was actually going in. Yeah. Johan has a bank on the 14. He's trailing. He's going to shoot. Yeah, well, he has to shoot the bank, but I don't know what else he... Can he go forward with it? In the, I'm not certain. If he can go forward with the bank and play shape on the 11, you know, that becomes much more appealing. 
if he can do I think he can. I think he can go back to 14 with a little right spin. Well, I don't know if the kiss is involved, Bill, with the right spin. I don't think it is. I think he's going to miss the kiss. Well, he can bank the two as well. It carries a lot more production. I don't know that the 11 even plays. He's good at that two ball straight back. Yeah, but his make percentage is much well, better with this bank. Well, it does play. Yeah, he, he, he avoided the kiss, but he didn't make the bank. You know, now Lunder's playing for two balls here. Now he's, Tony's just giving him the game. I don't well, know why. I don't know why he would give him the game. The seven was at an angle. He was crashing into the four for sure. So that was a little interesting. But that being said, Lunda leads two games to one. Chohan to break. He seems a little down and out. But he always seems a little down and out. And then before you know it, <laughs> he's walking back to the room. Winner. Yeah. Don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> uh, he appears to be on an emotional tilt by giving up the game like he did, but uh, let's take a look at it. Look at him going forward here and see how well he responds. So he's Blake breaking closer. Okay, there he comes out more. What this does is it alleviates pressure on the second and third ball and saves that corner ball from coming out. It's a little easier to hit with the new cloth. He caught the second ball real heavy, though, and the three did shoot out. Evan can't play it, but the cue ball didn't get up. So I think he can do something with this 10, possibly the two, Bill. Well, and, and uh, it really wasn't a show hand break. A show hand it really breaks the ball as well. That was a really subpar break by show hand. Well, he actually got the cue ball up much better than he did the time prior. But this time, he didn't get any cover. Yeah, and that three shot out, too, by the way. I don't know why it did that, but it did. Well, I believe he caught that second ball a little thicker than he liked. He could kick and stick to the 10 if he'd like and just stick there. He's good at that shot. Yeah, it doesn't have to be concerned with the return bank. Well, he, well, he got, well, he got away with that. Very fortunate that Tony doesn't like that at all. You know, because of some bad things could have happened had he not got that fortuitous kiss there, but uh, he did. Yeah, he had just got to come off the five and a little right hand English and get high in that side rail. You want to get high on the side rail. Yeah, it's pretty good from where he was. Yeah, nicely executed, nice speed, nice direction. Did he give? No, he does not have a window to the stripe nearest the rail, which is the 10. Does not have a window. He might have to come off of the pile or the three. Yep. He's taking an attention. Oh, I thought he was taking it to the judge. <laughs> That's what he's doing. So there must have been a dead ball in Tony's pocket. In order for him to just leave the cue ball in outer space like this, I'm highly surprised. That tells me there had to have been a dead ball in the stack, and he knew Tony could kick at it from anywhere. He might kick at it now. Well, he's the removed three. the dead ball. The three I'm talking about. Correct. But I was pertaining to the shot he had just shot. But to your point, he can kick to the low side of this or the back side. I like the low side this time and play it upright, Bill. Kicking to the yeah. low side, playing it up the, into the seven and four, and you can stun your cue ball straight up towards the side pocket. You've got to hit it with power. It's a snap stroke. Yeah, I kind of like kicking at it with a little speed, and the cue ball could possibly go toward the stack if you hit the three thinly enough. Yeah, you can go that route as well. I, I was talking this route. Well, then, uh, yeah, that's a draw stroke. He could put it, get it up. He could have got See, it up there. Yeah, he could have got he it up there. Could have got it up there, but he he was a little timid with that shot. Yes, he, he was. He really wasn't totally comfortable shooting it. No, you're absolutely right. Well, I don't know. Does Lunda gamble here? No, he's not going to gamble here. The ball position probably uh, is a... Uh, yeah, it's a problem. He's, he wants to move the four into some balls over to his side, I guess. Or, I'm just saying, he, he likes to play these creative shots. He could play the four off the ten and maybe go forward. 
Oh, he could play the four off at ten and just move them. Oh, that's what I thought he might do, but he didn't quite get where he wanted to be. He wanted to nudge him up behind the nine and five, Bill. Yeah, he sure did, but it wasn't a badly thought out shot because he's eliminating a couple balls from Tony's side of the table or that were readily available, and he didn't really leave any return options. Well, I wouldn't go too far with that, Bill. I think Tony might be able to twist this 12 back. I don't know about that. Yeah, I do. He overturned it. Oh and he's God. got it in. I thought the three was a This was a big problem there for London not utilizing the nine and five. He's opened the door and the window to the house, and Chohan is running in. You got to go. I don't play for the four here. Yeah, you've got to come all the way around. He's going to fall okay on the eight, fortunately. I think he was trying to yeah. come all the way around. Five for the five or nine. Yeah, I agree. I liked what you said. I think he definitely needed to go to the four there. No, I said I wouldn't play for the four. Oh, I think no. I would have played for the four. I couldn't tell because he was in between. So if you're going to come around, then make sure you get around due to where the 15 is. You could come up too far, but not short. That's probably the only issue. And this could have been a miss. Yeah, now this is a little tricky shot here, you know, with a bad angle. Pretty awkward on this angle here to play position for anything. He's going to have to execute this shot perfectly to come up with the shot on the 9 or the 11. See, it's a pretty tough angle. Well, well, he's he's barely got that. there. Yeah. He's playing for, I believe he's playing for five. And uh, the way he executed that shot, I thought he did a real good job in executing it because he did come up with a shot on the 11. Barely, but nonetheless, did come up with a shot on the 11. Nicely done. He's very good when he's close to the ball like that. Very, very good. He's got a great touch. He's got a perfect angle on this four to manufacture anything he'd like. The nine does play, Bill. If he doesn't want to go into the balls, I don't see anything wrong with going between the seven and three here. I, I like that. I like what, he's, what you're saying there. I don't like playing for the nine here. That's the shot. I like. Yes. He came up with a shot on the seven because of that. He's really limiting himself. If he played shape for the nine, he'd probably find himself in the one hole, but now he's probably going to run out. Oh, he mishit that slightly. He did mishit that slightly. Yeah, he went in a much four hit on the, on the nine, sending the nine toward his pocket. He's playing for one. Now, do you shoot this? I don't know if this is correct. I know that he's going to probably shoot it. All balls still favor London. They, they all go toward his pocket, so he's got to be careful here. Yeah, and you're right about that, Bill. Does he get away with it again? No, he no, doesn't. No, he doesn't. And I wouldn't be surprised if London got a bushel <clears> basket <throat> of balls here. You know, he's got the 8, the 3, the 2, even the 13 and 1 if, he, if he's able to, to end up in reasonable line for them. He he's, looks like he's, he's opting to go for the 3 first. Do you go for the 3 or I the think it's here? the right shot. The 3 carries automatic position to the eight. So I think that the three is the right shot. Shooting the eight first could cause problems. He feels like it's a bigger pocket this way. I think that's the right play because now he can go to the two or come down for the bank. I wouldn't mind getting rid of that bank. You've got to gamble at some point, right? I don't, and then, I, that's a pretty good observation there, in other words. Hey, you know, he's not guaranteed to fall on the next ball other than the two. And then, then, they get a, and then that's an awkward ball to fall on to get to the next ball. Correct. So, therefore, playing the eight and playing for the nine may be the correct way to go here, Scott. If you can get to the low end of the nine, right, Bill? You yeah. can get to the low end of the nine. You might be able to come up into the ten and get position on the 13 following it. So, you want to get somewhere around the center diamond on right. the low end if you are playing for the bank. And I think he should play for the bank, and I thought that was an excellent point you brought up there. Excellent. He's obviously doing something differently. Well, if yeah. he plays for the two, he's going to play for the inside of the two. Yeah, you're asking for trouble here, I believe. Yeah, I like playing for the bank here. He doesn't... Yeah, he's see, going to the bank now. Let's see why. Yeah, he's, he's going, going to the bank now. There you go. There you go. Well, he's a little thin on it now. No, I think that's perfect, Billy. That's exactly where I'd want to be, because now he can use running English like he is up into the 10. If he executes this, he could run out. 
Yeah, yeah. he could run out. And, and, and that's one of the reasons why I was kind of questioning Tony's decision. Absolutely. And I agree with your questioning. I think it's haphazard, and that goes back to what you and I discussed earlier. Nicely struck. He's going to hit. He needs a little uh, hit on the 10. He missed, he missed the 10. So he didn't get deep enough. He could have come even further. Yeah, but you don't want to put yourself so out of line on the back. Of course. You might miss it. Of course. But fairly easy bank for these guys, the twist back, especially in the forgiving pockets. That being said, I don't think you try to go forward or play anything crazy here for position. You want to get this ball down. Now, if he would have fallen a little bit shorter on the bank, he could have used a lot of English to put him toward the 10. Does have an angle here, Bill. Yeah, I don't. No. that's what I was saying. I thought if you it. shoot it, you go forward, it's no good. You're going to cause too many problems. He's given the game up where he got back into it. Yeah. Jo Joanne playing for one. I think if you are trying to play position there, you've got to try and punch. But you just didn't have the shot. The no. angle wasn't there. He forced it, and I was really surprised to see him do that because he got, he got back into this game, even though he needed all the balls on the table. They were still all in good position. Absolutely. Well, here we are. Not surprised. Two games apiece. Lunda's break. He obviously won the lag. It's anybody's game. But Lunda's break has been so good these last two times at the table that Chohan has been forced to go into the wrong side of the stack. It'll be interesting to see what happens here. Right. And so far, this has been a pretty interesting match here. You know, like I thought it would be very sharply contested. Absolutely. And it's come down to the final game, which a lot of games do, uh, matches do when you're racing the three. But this one in particular, I knew would be sharply contested because both of these players know one another's games quite well. And that's conducive to a more sharply contested match. Well said. Very well said. This is a big break for Lunda. It seems like he's got his cue ball a fraction closer to the rail this time. No, he got a nice little break no, there. Well, here's the problem, That's though. The nice cue ball break. didn't get up, Bill. That's not a pro There's no problem with this break. There is a problem. Well, he can see the nine, Bill. I take this break any day. Okay, well, why don't we look at what the issue is? Okay. This is the issue. Do you see now, Bill? Yeah, well, I, I myself, I would have taken that break any day. You know, he would have had to come up with a fortunate, fortunate. The issue kiss. with that break, Bill, in my opinion, maybe I'm wrong, but that the cue ball didn't get high enough. If he had protection, no, I agree. The cue ball didn't get high enough. Well, that's due to having the cue ball close to the rail, right? The more center out you get with the new cloth, the higher you can get the cue ball. But when you go into a break with a fuller hit, you get more, better spread with the ball. Well, that's great, but if you don't get protection, it does you no good. I agree. Actually so therefore, what do you want to do? Let's you do You want nothing. to gamble a little bit? Maybe he'll gamble here and play the 4-11-14 using the 9 or the 2. Well, this is a problem. And this goes back to the break that he used. He left the cue ball low. Chohan could see the 9, pocketed his balls, opened balls up, and now Chohan has an opportunity to win this match. Well, Chohan has always, has always had that opportunity. Well, right. it's, it's increased a little bit. <laughs> but, <laughs> and he's going to hit this nice soft speed here. Oh, my, he missed hit. He, he shot jumped it. up. He jumped up on the shot. You're right about that. He did jump on the shot. Evan gave him a little giggle. And when you jump up on a shot, that's an indication that you weren't prepared to shoot it. Well, it could be an indication of many things. First off, you're absolutely right. Not prepared to shoot it. Number two, I know it's a real thing here at the Derby City Classic. Fatigue is your worst enemy. I know he's tired. He's been playing all day, every day, like the rest of us. It's no excuse. Get off well, the ball. Uh, you know, regroup. I, I agree, but I disagree with that because if that's the problem, then he would have been jumping up prior to that if he was tired. But on that shot, he knew he had to execute that shot, and it was a winning shot okay. or, or a losing shot. Okay. You said it first. He's got to get position here. I don't know what he goes to. These pockets are forgiving. I don't know if he wants to go rail first here, but if he does, he could run into the nine. He played for, I don't know, he didn't miss hit that. 
Yeah, and we have... Uh, Tony can breathe now. Well, Tony, Tony tried to woof it to Evan, and Evan is woofing it back. Both players feeling heat. Ooh. Oh, watch out. Is it, oh, okay, it was a... Well, I don't know. I hand. think Tony might be able to get to the nine. Maybe. And if not, he can definitely get to the seven. I don't think he can get to the nine. He can play the nine maybe off the eight, but he's not going to do that. If not, he can get to the seven. Yes, he can. That's, he seems to be a, a viable option. He's going to take a look at the nine. He's going to see it's not any good. He's going to take a look at the seven, and he's going to shoot the bank on the seven. And this is his bread and butter. The two six eight also play Bill or the. There's no jump on this shot, though. I guarantee you that. Well, I don't know that he got there. Oh, well, he's got the speed. It didn't get there. Oh, it hit the rail. Had it not hit the rail, we would have probably got there. But you're correct. But he does have big cover. London's gonna have to take the one rail long kick. I like that much better than put, uh, pocketing in uh, off the uh, off the either the nine or or yeah. carry him off the eight. Yes, because the cue ball is going to stay low, and Joe exactly. can't afford to take exactly. a bank on the eight right. from there. I don't understand why he isn't looking at the long rail kick. I don't either. Well, that's why. Oh my goodness! Oh he my played goodness. the ball off the ball. Oh he laid good goodness. for it. He knew he could do it, and this is why. He's got a positional shot on the six. I'd love to see a replay of that, wouldn't you, Bill? But let's see what happens here. I mean, that was such a beautifully executed shot. And this is just as big. Needs to get this down. And he hasn't. You just get the sense that there's more to this match than what we've seen so far. And, and, and what are you implying exactly? Well, we might have a little bit more pool to play. <laughs> well, that's And here obvious. we got a replay of this shot. So I believe that he played to the top side of this ball. Look at that on your screen. He plays to the top side, utilizing the English. He knew it was coming to his side of the table, Billy. Yeah. Did he know it was going in? I don't know. No, he has to carry him off the eight to pocket the six. But the problem with the shot is not pocketing the six. It's controlling the eight. Well, I believe he's looking to bank the two and go into the one. Buckle your seatbelts. Um, wow. Didn't even come close. He jumped up. Yeah. So bad. He jumped up again. There's a he possibility did. of fatigue there, or maybe he's just weak. Yeah, yeah, he's a little weak there. He hasn't been jumping up other than those two real, you know, stressful shots. So this is a big shot again. He's not going straight to the six. Wow, that was a clean hit. What's the cue ball doing? Well, he's snookered on the one. Yeah, he is, and cutting the eight is no simple task either. He's going to have to swerve and take the bank on the eight. Yeah, that's what he's looking to do. He's going to look at the eight now. Take a look at the eight now. He, I look at the monitor with the eight now. I know that's not an option. He's going to have to curve to pocket the one. But if he doesn't do it, it's going to give Shoney a shot on the eight. The other problem, like Billy says, but the other problem as well is when you swerve here, he has to use a mild speed because you could follow this ball in. Well, he's not acting like he's got a swerve, so maybe we're misreading it, which is highly possible. All right, he was straight in. Wow, I am surprised that, that Tony took the bank on that two ball. I was too. Needs to get this down. He missed the five last time high. It's high, it's high. And that ball is missed high as well. well. Let's take a look at the score now, okay? Lunda has five balls, Shohan has one. But all balls are clearly in play here, so he's got to be real selective with his shot choice here. Well, the two does bank. Can he stop on the two right here? No, he can't stop. He doesn't have the angle to stop. Can he punch down? 
I feel like he mm. wants to bank the two. Well, of course he wants to bank it, but I don't know if he can. I don't know if he, if the angle allows him to bank it in play position on either side for the eight Correct. or for the ten. It's, a, it's an awkward angle. It's forcing him to do something he doesn't want to do. Uh, he better pay attention to his to his belly. You know, sometimes you when your belly says you can't do this, you got to pay attention to it. Well, he's fortunate once again to be back at the table. He's looking to bank it, and he, he, I don't think he has it. Well, yeah, I think he's cutting at this 11. Is he really, or is he kicking at the 8? He's overcut the 11, but look at the control on this shot. I cannot fault him. Look at the cue ball. Did he know he was going to ticky behind the 2? I think so, because he wouldn't have shot it like that if he didn't. Well, I don't know about that. I he do. could be right, but, uh, you know, I mean... I mean, to hit, hit the 11 ball as thinly as he did, there was no guarantee that cue ball was going to come off that 11 exactly where he figured it may have. I but think, it did. I think he put a lot of gamble into the shot. A lot of gamble, and he got away with it. Okay. But he knew, probably knew there was a possibility of that happening, but certainly, he certainly wasn't the favorite. Well, he did a good job. He sure did. And so did he. How did that ball bank past the eight? I'm looking down the line. He's got position on the two eight combination. He's playing for two balls. And he's playing for two. And this ball is hard to miss. You want to play it real first, if anything. Uh, hitting on the top side may not get it. It did, though. You know you got to play that close to the rail. It's hard to miss it that way. I agree. Shot it to the wrong side. I tell you what, Billy. Congratulations to Lunda. Overall, it was a spectacular match. We saw some amazing shots yeah. early, right? Yeah, absolutely. I was an absolutely. honor. Absolutely. Anyone that watched this match saw some pretty, pretty, pretty good stuff. It was an honor to work with you, as usual. You've been one that taught me throughout the years how to, how to do this job, and I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you very much to AccuStats and the 25-year anniversary. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon.